quarterback? Really? Really? We're going to do quarterback? Come on. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer daily shots of Penguins and Pirates in the same place that you found this because I also cover those teams. And those teams also have their own versions of endless debates about a specific important position. Only in this instance. I'm not going to lie. I'm really not feeling it. I'm really not feeling the need to do an episode that says, hey, Justin Fields is your guy. You're absolutely unequivocally not taking the football away from Fields heading into Las Vegas. And that doesn't mean that, you know, Russell Wilson's never going to get an opportunity or Wilson won't be taken seriously if he's a full participant in practice this week. I just don't see how... If you're Mike Tomlin, and my goodness, will this be a unilateral decision, you can look at that film from that game against the Cowboys and say, ah, that's it. Pulling the plug on him. All done. When to that point, and arguably including a big chunk of that point, you were setting yourself up for possibly having not just your quarterback of the present, but your quarterback of the future. Because to do something like that, completely disregarding Wilson for the moment, you're going to have to find some sort of flaw or some sort of significant regression on Fields' part to make a case that's compelling enough, not for me and you, we don't count, but for the people inside that building, specifically the people inside that locker room who've really gotten behind Fields, and who, by the way, were mostly responsible, way more so than Fields himself, for what went wrong offensively. In watching the film, which is always a much more uh, patient, methodical exercise than taking it in live, even though there are a lot of pluses to watching from the press box and not what the TV cameras choose to show you, I came to some conclusions about Fields' performance. Number one, he had no fewer than five passes, and I'm talking about five right on the money, everything you'd want out of them passes that weren't caught. Van Jefferson with a drop, Connor Hayward with a drop. I wouldn't call the deep ball for Darnell Washington a drop, but I, I would call out Arthur Smith for sending the wrong tight end on that type of route. And George Pickens, at the risk of belaboring, burying the guy, just just jogged through routes, which led in a couple of cases to passes landing somewhere. And I'm sure a lot of people saying, what a terrible throw that was, when in fact the throw went exactly where it was supposed to have gone and would have in fact been caught had George simply given a crap. We're holding that against Fields? That's what we're doing? Running game, again, no support, no nothing. Najee Harris winds up with 42 yards on what was probably, I don't have the stats in front of me, 41 carries. If we're not laying that on Harris, and I know there's a lot of people who never lay anything on Harris, it's always somebody else's fault. We're definitely not laying it on fields, and we're not even coming close to laying the line's shortcomings on fields, and the line was lousy. Broderick Jones had another tough night. Isaac Selmalu looked like someone who hadn't been in the lineup for a couple of weeks, and in general, there just wasn't enough pass protection, so fields was forced to do things he didn't want to do, and yet, still in all, the number one culprit out of all of this, and this stuck out more than any other facet of this film session, they don't get open. If you do nothing other than observe the Steelers, whether it's through something like All-22 film or if you're at the stadium, just watch the wide receivers. You don't see this on TV. They, They just do nothing other than follow the football. If you're following the wide receivers and you're seeing how 
they have an opposing jersey within like 2.5 millimeters of their own, and it never changes. They don't come back to the ball whenever Fields starts scrambling. And his number one receiver, to repeat this yet again, doesn't give a crap. You're going to bench the quarterback? This is actually something that some people are talking about? You're going to make a change there? He's the only one who showed up for work, just like Indianapolis. Have you seen the list of his targeted receivers in the game against the Cowboys? Have you seen the people that he was forced to be throwing the ball to? Have you seen the experience level of the line in front of him? Have you seen that the running back depth chart is at one? I, I, I swear to you, as I was leaving Akersher Stadium, this was what, like two in the morning? I guess what was officially yesterday. And I remember thinking to myself, as you're trying to come up with different ideas for the programming that you do for the content that you create, I remember thinking, and boy, was this naive on my part. At least this is a week where nobody's going to talk about the quarterback. And and you know what? (laughs) That should have remained the thought, like, everywhere. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Today's J1Q comes from Stanton, who says, Hey, DK, has anyone seen Patrick Queen back of a milk carton? He's been missing from action all season. No one's talking about it. Our inside linebackers were supposed to be a strength this year, and they've been mech at best. I think that's how you would pronounce mech. It's one of those words you only ever see in print, but you don't actually say it out loud. The only play they made... All season was in Landon Roberts forcing that fumble at the goal line. Peyton Wilson's shown flashes, but hasn't been perfect, and Queen's been just non-existent. Is it them? Is it the scheme? What's going on? Stanton, more than anything, it's been that the Steelers as a whole aren't stopping the run. I have no doubt that when we get to Thursday and Terrell Austin's availability comes up. And actually, for that matter, you know, Mike Tomlin today at noon, you're going to hear that it's about stopping the run. It's about making sure that you're creating second, nine, third, and eight, you know, the stuff that the Steelers' offense faces because they love to run in those situations. That another subject for another day. Part of what was supposed to happen with this defense, and you'll recall I talked about this a lot as recently as a month ago, was that the line had to hold. The line had to do its part. And that primarily, given the pedigree of the players who are up there, was going to have a lot more to do with stopping the run than it was with pass rushing. I don't know what kind of version we're to expect from Cam Hayward in his twilight, but I'd have to think that it's not anywhere near as much about getting to the backfield as it is about sealing things up. I don't believe he's done that. Everyone praises Keanu Benton. I I think over the top in some discussions, and and I really like what he can do. But until he's an ace at stopping the run, you're not going to see things change. Whereas what you are seeing change and what really kind of leaped out at me in that Dallas game was that There was a lot of rotation among the defensive linemen. There was a lot, and there was cause for that. They were out there a long time. Offense wasn't holding onto the ball, and the defense couldn't get off. And the two guys that would get on there, although you you saw everybody, even Dean Lowry was getting out there, but the two who were more than anybody else were Montrevious Adams and, yes, Isaiah Loudermilk, who's playing a lot more and who's playing pretty well. Now, he had the blocked field goal, and I'm sure that's what you're thinking of whenever I say that. But Loudermilk's reputation back when Kevin Colbert and everybody were really excited to get him was that he was a run stopper first, second, and third before he got to anything else. 
And he fairly takes pride in that. He and I had a talk after this game, and while he wasn't exactly about to glow about how he did in a really, really tough loss, he was taking it hard too, he did find a classy way to acknowledge, hey, you know, it's it's nice to be getting used. I wasn't really getting used in my first couple of years. I'm out there now, I'm contributing, I'm feeling more confident, and that's what you want. And all I'll say to this is that, look, we can talk about the inside linebackers. They're facing, in a lot of cases, a running back who's getting through with a full head of steam, you're going to get knocked over. You're not going to look good. Whether you're Queen or Wilson or even Roberts, this has to start up front. I'm not sitting here shilling for the inside linebackers. You guys know I spend a lot of time with them. But you have to look at the type of group that they are, the type of players that they are, and understand that this is no longer the Hardy Nickerson, Lawrence Timmons era of inside linebacker play. It's just not. They're out there principally to cover. Can they be better? Yeah, absolutely. Can Queen be better? Yes. But I I don't see them as the largely guilty party when it comes to this gashing that's occurred with opponents running games. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. Going to be back with another one of these tomorrow. 